This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. All right. Well, hi, everyone that's here. So um, this is going to be a follow-up on, uh, I did like a part one the other day about a case that we had of a patient who had unexpected renal failure and hyperkalemia, creatinine of like 26 and a potassium of nine and a half. And, uh, you know, we had to get the patient ready for dialysis. So, you know, the first thing, you know, even though we're going to be dialyzing somebody like that, they still need all the medical treatment of hyperkalemia. So we initiated medical treatment. And, you know, when we're going to put someone on dialysis who's not previously on dialysis. They need a what's called a vas catheter, dialysis catheter. And um, there were some questions about that. So basically, vas caths or dialysis catheters are large central lines. You know, they're basically 12 or 13 French catheters, whereas the usual central lines we put in, the usual triple lumens are seven Frenches, so about twice the size, um, significantly larger. So, you know, maybe a little more um, risk of the procedure, but overall, just a central line. We put them in the same places, um, usually a right IJ, sometimes a left subclavian, but like I said, they're just larger versions. And we don't stock them here in the emergency department, so if we know someone's going to need it, we have to start talking to the ICU about getting them. And then there are a couple different versions, and there's an interesting version called a trialysis catheter. It's kind of a catchy name. And the, the only difference between that and a regular catheter is that it has an extra port on it that you can use for just regular medications, you know, drawing blood just like you would with a regular central line. It does kind of bring up a quick point to talk about patients who have vas caths that come in. We're always kind of under the kind of general idea that we don't use patients vas caths for blood draws or medications. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, they're at high risk of getting infected. So anytime that the line is accessed and it's not perfectly sterile techniques, there's a risk of getting an infection to that area or to the bloodstream. So we try and avoid using those lines to prevent infections. Um, the other thing is that those lines can clot if they're not flushed properly with the right amount of heparin. So in general, at all costs, you know, if somebody comes in from the field, they have a vas cath, we should try to get a peripheral IV. But if somebody is, you know, basically peri-arrest, super sick, in arrest, it is just a line that we can use. Just first know that there's usually a lot of heparin in the line, so you want to draw back first before you just start pushing medications in it. And then just be very careful using it. Um, but if we need to use it, we can use those lines. Any questions? Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Hey, EMM. It's Mason here to tell you about an exciting new opportunity we are offering. In an effort to tangibly improve our organization's commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, we created the Diversity and Inclusion Award that fourth year medical students that identify as underrepresented in medicine and are applying to emergency medicine residencies are eligible to apply for starting today. We understand that the cost of applying to residency adds up, and we want to do what we can to ease that financial burden. We are extending three $200 awards to selected individuals following a blinded review of all applications. Applications will be accepted through the end of November, and winners will be announced mid-December. Check out our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.org backslash EDI dash award for all the details and to access the free application or click the link in our show notes. Thank you.